Hey everyone, Seth at Hope City Vintage. I just wanted to take a, a minute to uh, put together a little video for you on best operating practices for UFO. So let's just start from the very beginning. Uh, obviously this is a self-winding or automatic watch, meaning that there's a rotor in the back. Uh, that, and as it spins uh, through an intermediate wheel, it winds the mainspring. And uh, your movements throughout the day will uh, wind that spring loaded. Uh, but you can also wind this one manually at the crown and you'll feel that resistance there uh, when it's unwound it'll it'll the crown will turn pretty easily and as it uh, fully winds you'll notice that there's quite a bit of resistance it's fully wound now and running no problem you can see um, currently the time here is 208 uh, and that is correct thursday the 16th um, if we're setting the day or the date uh, one thing to keep in mind uh, the hour hand we always want to make sure that the um, natural date and day changing function of the watch is not engaged uh, when we're changing the day and the date. It can damage the delicate mechanism in there. So it's best to just make sure that the hour hand and the minute hand are somewhere in the southern hemisphere of the watch, just meaning below nine and after three. Below three, below nine on either side. Put the hands down there. That, that guarantees that there's no chance that the mechanism is engaged naturally. And of course, you'll just want to pull the crown out to the second position, and we can counterclockwise go through the uh, days. We'll go back to Thursday, and uh, the date obviously is going to be clockwise. We'll kick back around to the 16th. And all, all of them are changing very smoothly, no catches or anything like that. Um, we'll put it back into the neutral position or the winding position for this for this particular model. Uh, the crown is reset here. You can see the all of the hands are aligned at zero. If I press this top pusher here, uh, that'll send our hands into motion. Uh, the, the sweep obviously is going to make a revolution every 60 seconds, which will then kick off the minute counter here to total uh, each revolution of the sweep. So that goes around, the minute kicks over, and it's a ticking uh, minute register. So you'll see it just pops over to the next line for each revolution. And then the hour up top is actually a creeping uh, hour register, meaning it's in motion all the time, just very small motions and you don't see them um, because actually the what turns the hour register hand is the mainspring itself. It's uh, they're, they're directly connected. Uh, that hand is almost directly driven by the uh, top of the mainspring. So uh, that's how that works. And this is not, uh, so there are a couple of different types of chronographs, mechanical chronographs. You have a standard like this one. Um, and then you also have what's known as a flyback chronograph. With a flyback, you can just hit the reset button anytime. When the hand is in motion, uh, you can uh, hit the reset and it'll send it back to zero. If you're holding that button down, it'll hold that hand at zero. Um, and then if you let it go, it'll just take off again. But for this standard chronograph here, you, you actually have to start the chronograph and stop it as well. And then the button at the bottom here, the pusher at four o'clock is going to reset um, with, a, with a pretty firm press. And that'll send everything back to zero again. So we have start, stop, and reset. One other thing, um, so with Seiko, they use um, a column wheel style chronograph, and this one actually has what's called vertical coupling, a vertical clutch. And uh, that being the case, it's actually better just to leave the chronograph running all the time. To say it simply, the watch actually has to work a lot harder uh, to hold those chronograph hands still than it does to just let them run. When I actuate this pusher, I'm actually releasing a spring, um, which is compressed to hold these hands still. And of course, if we leave a spring compressed all the time, um, eventually it's gonna lose some of its ductility and malleability uh, and, and not be as uh, firm as it would be if it was uh, allowed to be unsprung all the time. So with this uh, chronograph, in, in this uh, motion here, with the chronograph running, that spring is unsprung. It's allowed to just be at rest and, uh, and not uh, compressed. And it's better for the watch to just run the chronograph all the time. It'll ensure uh, longevity of the chronograph wheel, which can be a, a pricey item to replace if something were to happen. Um, but this will give you a, quite a few more years of life on your watch just to let that chronograph run. If you do want to time a specific event, you can always stop the chronograph and uh, reset it and then time whatever event that you want to be, uh, that you're trying to record a time for. But otherwise, just leave that chronograph running all the time. It's, it's better for it. And because this one doesn't have a fixed second hand, uh, you'll be able to track seconds pretty easily as well. 
I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, you can you can always uh, get in touch with me via email. I'm happy to help in any way I can, but I hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a like below. Certainly, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. And thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.